Think. Act. <laughs> and prosper. You are now tuned into the Money Level Show. Hey everyone, welcome back to the Money Level Show. Frank here, we think, act, and prosper, right? And so uh, today I have Frank Trotter with me of Battle Bank, and I'm excited you know, for this interview because I've, I've been talking to Rick for a while. He's come on the show multiple times to talk about Battle Bank and uh, some of the great things that you all are doing. Uh, he's mentioned his history in banking and that being one of his favorite investments. And so uh, you are the person that he's been partnering with. So it's good to have you on. Oh, thank you very much. It's, Rick and I have been talking about banking for a long time. And even when we started Everbank, it was the sunken living room of the Rick Roll house that got yeah. it all going. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> That's good. Uh, so um, to my understanding, you started in the banking industry in the 80s? I did. Way back in the uh, dark ages in 1981, actually a little before that uh, in grad school. So we worked for a very entrepreneurial bank called Mark Twain Banks. Mm -hmm. uh, that was sold in 97 and we left uh, about a year later to begin the project to build Everbank. Okay, okay. So what, what was it like then in that? I mean, rates were pretty high then. Oh, and yeah. and uh, I remember some you know, some people telling me that they would get a mortgage at, I don't know, 16% or something like that. That would have been great. You know, our, in 81, we bought our home that we still live in today. Um, and our first 30 year mortgage was 19.2%. Wow. And uh, prime was 21 and a half at the time. Mm -hmm. uh, and of course that was really to get a lot of the inflation out of the market that uh, Paul Volcker did in the early 1980s. And since then, of course, we've been in a, uh, down interest rate trend that really kind of ended last year. You know, zero percent. Uh, now it's starting to come back up. Mm -hmm. And so, is this like a historical cycle with with interest rates? Um, I mean, because we were in uh, Rick talks about a um, uh, you know a thirty year period of uh, declining interest or forty years pretty 40 much. Years, I mean, really, yeah. people, some people invested in bonds and got good returns then. Yeah. And, so well, it could well be a long term trend that may go back the other way. We'll see. Uh, obviously, with the money supply growth that the, the feds produce, some of the fiscal deficits and other things, it's, we're simple old monitors, you know, and you put a little, a little extra money in the market that should imply inflation down the road. Yep. Uh, so does that take us back up to those levels? Probably not. But we'll, we'll have to wait and see what the Fed and others do down the road. It seemed like you had to, uh, Paul Volcker was pretty radical. Or, he and, was. And he had support of the government. Too, yeah. You know, who was trying to reduce. I'm sure he talked to a few people before he did the deal. But yeah, he's as Federal Reserve Chairman said, we got to get rid of this uh, and and put the finger in the dike. Yep, yep. So that's good. That's good. So um, so Everbank. Mm -hmm. So you started Everbank, and which, is, to my understanding, it was sold to like some teacher. Yeah, the TIAA, TIAA. Teachers uh, Inve Investment and Annuity Association. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so when starting a bank, it seems like a big task. I mean, like it seems impossible for me, like, <laughs> you know, like I'm like, I don't even know where to start with that. Right. So what, what was kind of that that vision? How was that vision, you know, birthed or developed? And then um, how, how did you, you know, overcome any type of doubt or anything of that nature to start? Well, I think, you know, when one, we've been in the biz a long time, so it's it's not a simple task, but uh, at least we know the steps. Uh, and maybe if we thought twice about it, we wouldn't have done it, but just joking on that one. Yeah, yeah. But uh, you know, I think what we started with was a, a group of individuals, clients, potential clients that weren't being well served. Mm -hmm. uh, like any business, whatever that is, you know, even uh, you know, the, the, the podcast business is, you know, who's not getting the information they want, who's not getting the banking information they want. Um, and Rick and I talked and said, we think we can drive a truck through that hole. Um, you know, after we sold the bank, they sort of abandoned the market we had served for many years, kind of de-emphasized our products, and we felt we could come back in. And the good news was we were able to get a lot of the original team back. Uh, you know, a number of the individuals either were co-founders of Everbank or worked at Everbank for many years. And uh, we were really gratified that people were willing to answer the call. Nice, nice. So you got the old team back. I, I'm trying to think of the, the movie. I don't know if it was the uh, the replacements or the longest yard. Yeah, or something. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> like, you know, we got the team back together. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was that was pretty funny. Uh, so uh, that's good that you have uh, people that are experienced and been through this with you yeah. before, and um, you know, like where a lot of 
I mean, obviously people grow and change and evolve and mm -hmm. everything, but it sounds, seems like you all still have the same aligned mindset that you had back in the day, right? Well, it feels that way. And we also have additional members from other places that enhance the offering. Uh, so we not only have a lot of the old things that we did, but you know, new things. And I think everybody's more sophisticated. You know, we tried a lot of stuff early on. Some of it worked, some of it didn't. Mm -hmm. um, and now we can sort of leave those things that didn't work off the table uh, and just focus on the things that did work. And it's a new world. You know, as, as you know, a lot of things were newsletter based for years. Now we have, you know, blogs and podcasts and other things that are really starting to dominate the landscape. Um, and we'll, we'll be involved with all that, but it's all about getting information in the hand of a potential client and letting them know what we can do for them. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's good. And so um, Everbank was online, an online mm -hmm. bank. And y'all started in the early 2000s, right? Or late 90s? We actually launched in November 99. 99. So it would be uh, 24 years ago this November. Mm -hmm. And that, that was probably, I mean, that was probably an interesting time because, you know, you had the dot com and, mm -hmm. you know, all this craze around that. Then you had the dot com bus, but... Uh, you know, what was it like, you know, establishing an all online bank? Because at that time, I'm sure people still, you know, went to the branch and oh, yeah. everything versus now. There's probably less. Lot sure. less. Well, I think it was interesting. You know, if you think about it, that was, you know, iPhone launched in 2008. So it was, you know, eight, nine years before the iPhone. So people weren't really familiar with uh, doing thing on a phone or really to a large degree on a desktop. Um, it was funny when we did our first PR uh, thing, it was the first, second week of January 2000, and it was the week that AOL and Time Warner announced their merger. And that was the big news. It, it, who thinks about AOL anymore? Yeah, yeah. So this is ancient history. Um, and a lot of people had trouble with their computer, didn't quite, couldn't quite I figure it out. I do remember the dial-up sound to get on the internet. You know, I do remember that, y'all. Yeah, yeah. look at go back and watch more <laughs> games and, you know, a 300 baud modem. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Good Lord. But it's just different. You know, people are very familiar with technology now. Uh, you know, people we have talked to and, it, and it's not really age dependent anymore. You know, older folks, younger folks, everybody can deal with it. Uh, and that's really helpful. And, you know, we wrote our entire online account opening as well as our online banking from the ground up uh, for Battle Bank. Uh, at Everbank, we kind of took it off the shelf and did, dealt with whatever we could uh, was there before us. So now we, had, we know exactly how we want it to be. We're developing it the way we want it to be. And I think it'll be good for clients. So it seemed like, you know, during that time when you started Everbank, like uh, it was a, uh, you were able to see like in the future or see mm -hmm. kind of where things were, were headed. And so now that uh, we do have more people to have access to online banking, I mean, a lot of money's uh, digital. People aren't used to like, cash in their hands as much anymore, which yeah. it, it is beneficial with precious metals, you know, just, just exactly. a little side, little side tip. Um, and then, but now, so like now that you're starting Battle Bank, um, you know, how, how are you looking towards like how this is gonna serve people in the future? You know, so like, like you do with Everbank. Well, I still think, you know, um, and when we started Everbank, we kind of looked out at the landscape and banks were not paying fair rates of interest. They were charging high fees, they were providing bad customer service. And astoundingly, to a certain degree, that's still happening. There are a few offerings out there that are very nice. Um, you know, we asked last year who loves their bank and a few hands went up and that's great. Uh, a lot of community banks do a great job. But in general, your look to the future, hopefully you start pushing rates up and allowing clients to be paid a fair rate, mm -hmm. not having that uh, overwhelming fee uh, that sticks on their account. Some of the big banks are 25 bucks a month. Um, and a broader access to precious metals, one of your favorite topics, you know, foreign currencies, other things uh, that really uh, help people diversify their life and really look more globally. Mm -hmm. So you you paid uh, in Everbank, you paid a really nice interest rate on checking. Yes. Right? I mean, it's hard to get an interest rate on checking now. I think, I think we launched at 601. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's it's, <laughs> it's very challenging to get uh, interest rate on checking. So like, but that was in those days. Yeah. You know. Yep. Yep. Definitely. So rates were higher then. But um, so uh, recently uh, my bank uh, was paying three point three percent on checking and then and then they they just stopped the whole checking program. Mm -hmm. And so. Um, how, how do you view, obviously, like, you know, not having these, these branches mm -hmm. saves a lot of money. Yes. Um, and so how are you viewing, using that capital to... Well, I mean, obviously, we're going to spend a lot of that paying clients back. You know, right now, if we were to open today, our full checking account, which is really a single account, 
If you want to use it for savings, that's great. If you want to use it for checking, that's great. It's probably 415 to four and a quarter. Mm -hmm. So really giving people the money they deserve. Um, and I think that's really important. You know, we did buy a failed bank at, Ever, at, at Everbank in 2012, uh, 2010, excuse me. Um, and that cost a lot to run those branches. So one of them is right around the corner from where we're sitting right now. Uh, there are a lot of people in it, a lot of real estate to pay for it. And you have to send the auditors out, you have to check the ball. It's expensive. Yeah, yeah. And we give that back in better rates and we think uh, better client service because we can hire an older branch manager who's done this work, mm -hmm. um, not just somebody reading off a script that just got out of school. Yeah, yeah. You know, we'll train people up, and that's great. But uh, you know, it's it gives you better client service and a much better value. Yeah, and it sounds like a part of the client service uh, from what I was learning is that uh, this is through Rick. I mean, he's yeah. he's heavily involved, <laughs> uh, but that the people that you all employ have. Um, I mean, they were like some of the, the top performers mm -hmm. at, at where they were at in the banking right. industry. They were, you know, typically a lot of the, uh, the, the client services group, uh, there was an office for Everbank out on Long Island. A lot of the people used to work in the city. Mm -hmm. They might have been a branch manager or a frontline person in a bank, but uh, we brought them in and said, you know, you can, instead of wearing a three-piece suit and a tie every day, you can, come out to Long Island, not make the commute for an hour and a half each yep. way, yep. sitting around in a pair of Dockers and a polo shirt, mm -hmm. and tell people what you know. You know, they've done the transaction 10,000 times before, so they don't have to go back, you know, page through a book and say, how do I do this? Mm -hmm. They've done it. Um, and we have a number of the people from the old Everbank that have already come over, and more that are sort of waiting for the opening to, to join us. So we're gonna have good experienced people, know what they're talking about, and importantly, if they don't know what they're talking about, you know, don't know the answer, they'll say, I don't know, and I'll get back to you. Mm -hmm. uh, that's an important thing. A lot of people just come up with an answer off the top of their head. And yeah. That doesn't work. Yeah, definitely, definitely. So um, so with uh, right now the, the environment we're in, I mean, inflation staying pretty sticky. Mm -hmm. um, you know, most people are, are getting negative interest rates, right? Negative mm -hmm. real rates. Um, and so it sounds like every, um, not everything, Battle Bank is yeah. going to be going to be uh, competitive and helping people preserve wealth. Yeah. Uh, so uh, one product that uh, you all have is is uh, bullion, mm -hmm. or you know, to be able to you know take loans out against your bullion and such, right. which actually interests me because uh, some of my audience know that I was in numismatics and things and certain coins that that it was hard to resell. And so sure. I'm, I'm like, I was thinking, I was like, well, if Battle Bank's is doing this, then I'm not going to be able to, <laughs> to send in a, a, a Scrooge McDuck, whatever. No, exactly. <laughs> just, you got a, that much of a, a premium on yeah, it to be yeah. a little tough to get that loan yeah, out. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So that's a that's an amazing, uh, amazing, um, you know, option for people. Mm -hmm. You know, that especially that may need the liquidity. Uh, what what do you what is your take on like just uh, competitive rates on loans and mm -hmm. like you know what does that process look like? Where's it stored or? Well, a different, number of different things. If you're just getting it directly from us and you're a client of ours, we'll be storing it for you. Mm -hmm. uh, so we will have allocated storage if you want to buy specific coins, bars, or wafers, or whatever. Um, and we'll have unallocated, mm -hmm. uh, where we actually hold metals, no paper gold, you know, metals in custody uh, that to fulfill any amount that uh, clients have. Uh, so if you come directly to Battle Bank, then we're going to you know, hold the metal for you. We'll take the appropriate lien on it, uh, which is uh, a process. Uh, and then you can provide the liquidity, you know, 50% advance. Uh, there's a point in time if the, the price of gold declines that you have a call. Mm -hmm. uh, say put a little more money in or a few more ounces. Um, but, you know, really it's an easy process. And we'll be working with third-party dealers as well. Um, can't really disclose any of the names at the moment. We have a number uh, that are in con contractual negotiations mm -hmm. with where we're just going to allow the dealer to, uh, if, you, if you go on so many sites today, it says, do you want to finance this? Uh, so this allows somebody to buy more gold. You can buy 50% more, or really 100% more. Mm -hmm. uh, or you can get liquidity if you need to put that deck on or buy a business or you know finance something. So it's just a way to uh, give you the liquidity and, and or just buy more. Yeah, that's good. That's good. And so, um, I mean, like precious metals are obviously like for me, like I, I went too much into it and, mm -hmm. you know, 
it, even Rick told me like, yeah, you got way too you're, much. You're a little too much. Yeah. You know, you're gonna need liquidity. Like if there's like you know market correction or mm -hmm. or whatnot, and and so I, I'd actually dial back a lot on my precious metals and and kind of doing a rinse, you know, rinse of it mm -hmm. and whatnot. Um, so what are some of the other? So you mentioned like foreign currencies and yep. such. So like, what? How does that? Um, you know, uh, benefit like clientele. Well, I think there's a number of different things. You know, holding multiple currencies really is a diversification of your cash portfolio, not unlike precious metals. Precious metals, we think, is probably more of an actual asset class to put in your diversified portfolio. Foreign currencies is a diversification of your cash portfolio. Um, you know, over time, you know, the dollar moves against different things. It's kind of been static for the last six years, but it kind of feels to us. You know, a lot of other market prognosticators out there that the dollar is likely to decline over the next five to ten years and our clients just want to take advantage of that mm -hmm. you know gain if the euro improves or the australian dollar or the chinese renminbi uh, improves or you know just to hold steady uh, they're going to add they're probably going to have precious metals probably going to have foreign currencies and we also offer a principal protected uh, deposit product uh, from time to time where We'll give you 100% of your money back in three to five years, and then a return based on a market index that we develop from time to time. So all this stuff is really looking to provide you access and inflation or other protection um, for your money. You know, it's just another asset to put in your diversified portfolio. That's good. That's good. So, um, yeah, thank you for sharing that information. It's, it's, a, it's a, a very valuable and I, I'm looking forward to it. So what, you have anything else to share with the audience about Battle Bank and just what oh, Absolutely. I mean, first up, you know, we're always looking for people to join the wait list. You know, we're going to we have a large wait list already. So we're going to be opening accounts for people on the wait list mm -hmm. first. Uh, we have to work our way through that. So come and visit us. We'd love to hear from you. Uh, when you join the waitlist, you can always leave a comment, say an idea about a product or a service or what you think about anything. And hopefully we'll be open this fall, early, you know, late, late fall, early next year at the latest. Mm -hmm. um, and hope to have all of uh, your, your listeners uh, come on in. Uh, we're excited for it. And um, as Rick and I sort of joke, it's, uh, you know, we're spending our retirement starting a bank. Yeah, uh, yeah. I don't know if that counts for retirement, but it's, uh, it's been a lot of fun. Yeah, you know, and I, I view this more as like giving back. I mean, because uh, I've heard you use the, the word uh, there, there's predatory lending, and then you know, similar to like you know, predatory deposit rates. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Not yeah. legal term. I have to. Yeah, yeah. My, our attorney's sitting on my shoulder here. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. It's 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 a coin term that's just <laughs> you know to explain something, right? There you go. Uh, but you know, like people were having money in banks at billions and billions of dollars getting. You know, zero point. I, I forgot the. Well, I think the uh, the Wall Street Journal said they failed to pay over six hundred billion in interest mm -hmm. back to the clients over the last couple of years. Yeah, I think yeah. the number is quite a bit larger actually. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, and uh, you know, I hope that this this uh, interview and just you know what what I'm doing to help wake people up. I think you're doing a fabulous job. Love talking to you. It's been a lot of fun to get to know you. Yeah, appreciate you, Frank. Have a great day. Yeah.